Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Mountain Murders Offbeat. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. Heading into a brand spanking new year. Yes, and maybe it'll be better better than the last. Dylan, I feel like you should cosplay like the New Year's baby. Oh, we'll I could put you in a diaper. Yep. You've got like this long hair, so we could put a little bow like in your hair. Okay. Get you a little passy. Yup. Yeah. And I would, is the New Year's baby typically a fat baby? Well, of course. Okay. The fatter the baby, the cuter the New Year's baby, of course. Oh, well, then I will be the cutest New Year's baby ever. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying you could totally cosplay a super cute New Year baby. You want me in a dopper. Well, no, not really, but I just think it would be adorable for so, a couple of minutes. So we've been together for right at three years now. We have. We've been podcasting for uh, two years. Just had our two-year anniversary. We did. This is the birthday week for the podcast. Yes. And so I'm saying, if tomorrow I told you you found out that I had, like, the baby fetish, where I want to be, like, in a oversized um, pack-and-play crib. I have to be a really fucking big pack-and-play. And Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And, and no, and like, I want you to feed me and like, I'll be like, mama. And this is, this is my kink. This is what turns me on. Would you do it for me? Yeah. I would just be really neglectful. Mother, I would put up some baby gates and like lock you in a room. Oh my God. And just like fail to feed you and stuff. Would you so, give me like tall boy beers with like a nipple on it? Well, no, I probably wouldn't do that either because I'm just going to be like super neglectful. So oh. sure, you can have your kink, but... I'm just going to neglect you. I'm going to be a neglectful mother. You'll oh, be a neglected baby. And you're going to slap cigarettes out of my hand and be like, babies don't smoke. No. Oh, my God. Bad baby. And then I'll just smack you through the face and shit. Well, never mind then. Then we'll end up on a true crime podcast. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? So, yeah, you can have that kink. Baby made a caca. Yeah, baby's going to sit in that shit for the next six months, too. Yeah, this is not going to work out. he crawls his little ass in the bathroom and takes a shower. <laughs> You got that? Babies don't take showers, dude. You got to come clean the little baby. Fuck that. <laughs> She's like, Fuck that. She's like, my kids like wipe their own asses, and I'm not regressing on that one. No. Okay. My kids are about grown and out of the house, bro. I'm not into having a baby now. Oh, my God. If they start driving cars, that is scary. Our kids Our, driving oh, They're going to say it. Like, we I have... Know. Like three kids that will be driving within the next year or two And two years. of them, you could take them driving now, honestly, because well, my, they're 14 plus. My daughter, she's my eldest, and she is able to take driver's ed this year. Oh, fuck. I mean, she's 15, so this time next year, she could be a licensed driver. No, and I cannot that's imagine. that's scary. I cannot imagine Bella in a car. No. Or Ayla <laughs> or Zane. No. Okay. And I'd already have other kids driving, and they're kind of scary, too. Okay, so no cosplaying a New Year's baby. Got that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to go in another direction because I don't think the baby kink's going to work out for me. No. Okay. So what else is going on with you? Well, we have a brand new patron. Oh, my God. Just saw it. We have a brand new patron, and thank you so much. Just like the rest of our patrons, we love you. We also love our, you know, I was also thinking about, we love our listeners as well. Dude, our listeners are amazing people, and they have supported the podcast. Some of our listeners have been with us since the very beginning. Since the very, I see some names or some comments on various social medias. I'm like, they're like OG in my mind. They've been here since 10 people were listening, things like that. We do think about that. It means a lot to us. But our patrons, they are our patrons. They're shooting us a little bit of them. A little bit of chatter on the down low directly, and we really love our patrons well, as well. Well, we pour it right back into the podcast. Yes, so but thanks so much for that. We do carry on about our patrons sometimes, and I just want our listeners to know as well that we love you, each and every one of you. But Anne, right now, this is about Anne. She's our newest patron. And you are sponsoring today's show, and we hope you like it. I hope she fucking loves it she might oh my god well as we say goodbye to 2020 and you know throw at the bird and we welcome in 2021 i thought it would be fun to discuss some appalachian new year's traditions and i guess you could call some of them superstitions yeah this is interesting because i'm sure i've heard of some of this but um you know i haven't really thought about you know um appalachia specific you know kind of traditions and things as far as the new year goes well some of them 
a lot of folks have probably heard, and maybe you've even participated in some of these traditions, but some of them are going to seem maybe a little odd or strange or maybe things you've never heard before. So hopefully it will blow your mind. You just go ahead and spit it on me. Plus, we're planning some really fun things for 2021. Got some surprises, in, you know, in the bag. So it's going to be a great year. Yes, and I must mention, we are going to bring back our patron Patreon Discord, and we want all our patrons to join us on that so we can interact directly. Okay. Ooh, wow. Damn, is that was that too much? Was that forceful? Do you have any, like, favorite memories of, like, New Year's Eve celebration? I thought you was going to say of 2020. You know what? One th- funny thing is there's this whole energy. You know, a lot of times New Year's coming up, and it's inevitable. And, oh, you know, some people talk about the next year. What am I going to do? And resolutions, is that resolutions, what Resolutions, things of that nature, looking forward to the next year. And then you have other people who are, like, nostalgic for this year. Oh, you know, this great thing's happened this year. It was a good year for me. I kind of don't want to leave it behind. But I think the general consensus this year is, fuck 2020. Fuck 2020. Let's hope that 2021 is just a little bit better because it's been rough. It's been and- a rough year. It's been hard on a lot of people. And I know some of our listeners have had not good things happen this year no it, it, i mean it's um to the point of it's a generational thing there everyone's going to remember this year when this all this stuff started and all these things happened well it's been and, a historical year for sure and 2020 took alex trebek from us we, we were, were just watching some jeopardy reruns on netflix while we you know shoved pizza and hot wings in our mouth holes Ooh. Yeah, so I love Jeopardy. I, one day, I want to audition for Jeopardy. Like, that's on my bucket list. But it's not going to be the same. Because you well, want to get to see the not, back. I'm there for the fucking trivia, Dylan. You're there for the money. Well, that too. I think I have a chance of, like, a good shot that I can make it to Jeopardy if I really focused. Man, you know um, a little bit about a lot of things. Does that well, make well, sense? Well, when you watch the show. Yes. I feel like I, I could make some money. Right? You're a jack-off of all trades. I am a jack-off of all trades, that's for sure. You're all right, about so... to jack-off on your face here. Are you ready? Do you have any great New Year's memories or anything, like a tradition that you've kind of held over the years? Well, no, I don't know if it's a Southern thing or it's the whole eating um, greens and black eyed peas. Oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah, so that's... Um, I always remember that growing up. And uh, I guess one represents money, one represents maybe love. Well, we're going to get into that. But either way, so you had that meal typically around that time. You know, Is the there day. any, like, one particular New Year's Eve that sticks out in your mind as, like, wow, that was, like, the best fucking night? No. No, not... I mean, I really don't have these incredible New... I have some other great holiday stories, but just New Year's Eve, it always seems like I'm either working or um, for years I had small kids... And not a lot of support as far as babysitters or, you know, somewhere to leave them. So I didn't all, I didn't do adult New Year's Eve a lot. Right. I would sit there at home and watch the ball drop with whatever kids still awake. Okay. Yeah, which is not a bad thing. I would have to say ringing in 2015 was an excellent time. I went out with my three, like, best friends and we ended up at um, a gay bar in Asheville, Scandals. Ooh. Kind of like the big gay bar there. Yeah, it's a really big gay bar. Well, oh my gosh, it's so fun. There's like three levels. There was like a drag show and like a DJ. And oh my God, we danced for like six hours. We all left like a sweaty mess. So there was sweat running down your butt. Crack. Oh my God, we had so much fun. Okay. Like, it was like the best night. So if I could just like relive that night for the next 20 years, like 20 New Year's Eves, I'd be like tickled to death because it was such a fun time. You make me feel boring now. Well, you are boring. Well, that's okay. But you know what? I'm steadfast as well. Well, honey, we had a fun New Year's this past year. What did we do? Well, I got high as fuck on edibles (laughs) and I was like, these aren't working and then continued like eating more and more of them. So, okay. Here's what you're describing is you discovered... Your tolerance in relation to edibles, because neither of us were familiar with them, and um, we ended up in jet you especially, because I think your liver, obviously, you know, it works different in each person. Your liver goes hardcore and makes it way stronger than it should be. Yeah, so we're out at this, like, bar, and our friend is DJing, and there's, like, dancing, and, like, my friends are there, and... 
They're all like running around in the parking lot drinking champagne and shit and so, being crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I started freaking out because it was like the music was talking to me directly or something. And I was like, I have to get out of here. And so, so we left before the ball even dropped. <laughs> no, so Yeah, I'll say I'll set the scene. So we go finally go out because we don't typically go out a whole lot. We go out and yeah, your friends are there and they're they're fun and cool. And they're sipping on a, you know, moonshine jug in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. And, like, somebody had a bottle of champagne, I think, and, in the parking lot, and too. And champagne. And everything looks great. Our friend uh, DJ Country is DJ in the place. It sounds great. It's booming. You know, we have, live in a small town, and we don't have that many options of place. But the place is popping. It looks awesome. Everything's perfect. I'm feeling it's high. It's our favorite, like, little local dive bar. But they were I'm feeling high. Bringing it New Year's Eve. She's feeling high. We're all laughing, having a good time. And so by the time we get there, get out of the car, go inside after about 10 or 15 minutes of bullshitting with friends, and it's popping, and the music sounds good, and everyone's having a great time, I'm just, I think to myself, this is going to be cool. So we're there about 30 minutes before midnight, and just went out on a lark, you know, a last minute thing, and I look over at Heather, and she has this look of impending doom on her face and i'm just like what how are you feeling like this well and, and it turns out she had we'd ingested too many homemade edibles and we were um she got really really way too high i was fucked up so last minute she fucking and this is like 12 45 or well so. i remember like trying to dance with my girlfriends and my one friend ginger She's like laughing and like I don't know. I just remember and she was dressed like a flapper girl. Like she had on this whole twenties oh, kind of getup. She was totally she cute, so cute. Yeah, but I just remember her face and it seemed like it was morphing into like weird shapes. And I was like, oh, I need to leave. She starts getting. Plus, I already have like some social anxiety right. <laughs> issues. So Heather gets starts getting sweat, like visibly sweaty all over, and I'm just like, Honey, are you okay? You grasp my arm, and are just like you have to take me out of here now. And I'm just like, what? And I'm, uh, I was like, I'm leaving. And I just like took off. Yeah, <laughs> like, she walked out the door. Out the door. <laughs> like, whether you want to come with me or not, I'm going home. So we left like uh, nine minutes before the ball dropped. That's how that worked it's out. true. We got home and then it was like midnight. And I drove her home and she laid in the bed and convalesced for about an hour, figured out she wasn't dying and did not need any emergency services. And then she felt a little bit better. That was a very weird New Year's Eve for sure. <laughs> and all of my friends were like, what happened? Are you okay? Were you guys in a fight? And I was like, no. no. I was just really fucked up. Yeah, but. I didn't um, even have any drinks. Just so everybody knows, she knows her tolerance for edibles now. And she has used them therapeutically throughout I the year. I would never do that because they are not legal here in North Carolina. And I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just saying she figured it out. Oh, my God. You just, this is going to be used in the courtroom. It's not the first time we mentioned it. Oh, my God. Somebody is revving up their truck next door. Do you hear that? It's that fucking Mustang up the road. Is it? Yes, because they have re drove it around the block like 20 times. Thank God for rednecks. So, anyway. So, now that, that is our fucked up New Year's Eve story. So, this year, it's going to be much more tame. Yeah. We're going to have a quiet evening at home with the kids. It's true. We're going to want sparkling popcorn, cider. some 80s movies, sparkling cider for the kids. I got stuff to make that sausage dip that you like so much in the crock pot, in the crock yeah. pot pot. Just so people know out there, it's the sausage dip recipe that is on the, Rotel. on the Rotel tomato can. That, that recipe is fucking incredible. If you haven't tried the dip, capital T, you got to try it. And we're just going to uh, hang out and I might have a couple beers. Of course you will. Oh my God. Well, I have some vodka. Don't body shame me. I'm not body shaming you. I, I feel like you are fat shaming me. Like beers are causing all my problem. Just a couple. I don't remember the last time I drank a okay, six pack. Well, the next time you complain that nothing fits and you can't button your shirts, I'm not saying it's because you drink beer all the time. It's not the beers. I would it's, never say that. It's the carbs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what did people Let's do get back in the day? Into our episode, we have been bullshitting a little too much, Big D. Are you I don't ready? think so, because you know what? I think people want to hear from us. Well, sometimes I think they like the bullshit, and then sometimes they're probably like, okay, guys, move it along. Yeah, so if you have an opinion on that, hit us up at mountainmurderspodcast at gmail.com. Unless it's a negative opinion, and then I'm not going to read it. No, Are you ready? <laughs> let us know. Say more bullshit or less, or say you fucking love us. 
Let's get into it, Dylan. So our first tradition you've already mentioned is very popular in Southern and Appalachian culture, and you've likely heard about it probably because Dylan just told you. That is the meal you're supposed to eat on New Year's Day. Are well, yeah. you ready? I am ready. Black-eyed peas and greens, and these can be collards, mustard, or turnip greens. And this is eaten for good luck and prosperity. Now, some variations of this include adding some type of pork. Though, I mean, if you're truly Southern or Appalachian, your black-eyed peas and your greens should be seasoned with some pork if you're cooking them right. <laughs> you throw some ham hock in there, girl. Some jowls. Yeah, some, some pork, back. pork jowls. Some people say you've got to add cornbread to the meal. Some also add cabbage to the meal for prosperity. Now, interestingly enough, the practice of eating black-eyed peas has some history behind it. Really? During the Civil War, when Sherman marched through the South to Atlanta, northern troops thought they stole or destroyed all usable foods. However, the Union soldiers were unaware that black-eyed peas had any kind of nutritional value, so they left those alone. So they saw this plant or these dry beans, maybe. I, I don't know what capacity, but they thought they were, it's not even food, it's bullshit. But they like, that was like a salt of the earth. I mean, they literally raised and burned everything, and basically like the Romans would do, salt the land behind you so no one can grow there for generations. That's what that was like. Southerners gobbled up the black-eyed peas to make it through the harsh winter months, and the peas became a sign of good luck for many Southerners who considered themselves lucky to have something to eat when so many were going hungry. Oh, wow. So I see the connection to luck and uh, feeling prosperous at the moment. Do you like black-eyed peas? I do. I do, too. I don't like it all the, you know, a lot, but, you know, when I do eat them, I enjoy some black-eyed peas with some other foods. I love black-eyed peas. I'll eat the hell out of some legumes. I love beans of all kind. You bring me some butter beans. What's a legume? A legume. Is that is that beans? It's like, yeah. Is that the bean family? Yes. See, this is why I don't win Jeopardy. No, you don't. The fucking... Oh, my God, you're a smarty pants. Bring me on some soup beans, some pinto beans, some navy beans. Give me some 15 bean soup. I love all the beans. All right. One superstition is that you actually need to eat 365 black-eyed peas in order to have a good look throughout the year. Oh. And some superstitions say that if you don't eat the 365 black-eyed peas, like however many you eat, let's say you eat 120, then the other... 245 days are going to be bad days. Uh, who's actually counting beans out? I mean, damn, they really, I guess someone who really believes that. Yeah. Well, the greens are said to represent money or wealth, and some people add cornbread to the meal to signify gold. Others say cornbread will ensure slow, steady work for the year. Pork is added for other reasons. So in Appalachia, pigs were considered a sign of wealth. Well, yeah, I think that's not, you know, specific to Appalachia. I think that's true in many cultures. Also, pigs can turn their head all the way around to their backs, which folks think, which a lot of folks think means that they are always looking ahead to the future. That makes sense. If you're eating cabbage, the tradition is that you should cook it with a silver coin in the cabbage. And whoever finds the coin in this cabbage will have extra luck all year long. So it's kind of like finding the baby in the king cake for Mardi Gras. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of like a choking hazard that you're putting in an anonymous person's bowl. Is well, what it's hopefully really like. it's going to be at the bottom of the bowl and people would be looking for the coin. Well, I'm just saying that just seems like a dangerous practice. Well, this seems like something that people would be aware of, Dylan. It's not like you're just going to randomly like give somebody a bowl of cabbage with a coin in it and not tell them ahead of time. Dude, that's like... <sighs> you ever think everything. That is like putting the engagement ring in, the bo- in a glass of champagne, right? That might seem all romantic and stuff in the movies. But what if you like your girl you want to get engaged to is like a lush and she's just like slamming shots and like then you have some nice well, champagne brought out. The champagne flutey is or flute uh is clear and the champagne is clear, so she should be able to see that there's a ring in it. Well, this girl might already be like toasted, bruh, and she's like hitting shots of like patron. Well, then and maybe shit. you need to rethink your proposal. Well, I'm just trying to be romantic. Why don't you prioritize? It's not my fault that I'm trying to marry a drunk girl. That is your fault. Another tradition which happens to appear in many cultures outside of Appalachia, but also in Appalachia, is the kiss at midnight. 
No, I think I think most people are aware of that one. Well, many mountaineers have probably heard someone say, whatever you're doing at midnight on New Year's Eve is what you'll be doing all year long. So if you're kissing when the clock strikes 12, I guess you're going to have a horny year. So you're just going to lay around suck face with your girl or your guy all year long? Is basically what that means? If the good Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, Dylan. Oh my God, is that a saying? Yeah, there's actually a Hank Williams song about that. Damn. Okay. Churches also hold a watch service where the congregation gathers and prays for the coming year. They are a way for people to show thankfulness for the ending year and offer prayers that the coming one will be blessed. Now, in Appalachia, something else that happens often is shooting guns as a New Year's tradition. Others shoot fireworks, which I think that's probably in a lot of different cultures. Our neighbor down the street, I think we mentioned this before, shoots fireworks for all occasions. There was some went off the other night, remember? Oh, well, there was some last night. There were night. some mortars going off. They I mean, it's like, shoot fireworks like every fucking day. I've got day. to find these people and be like, what's the fucking deal, Why are guy? you celebrating? Like every day. Like why are you celebrating a Wednesday, like you know, a week into December? I know, all these December. Uh, uh, pyrotechnics. It's like, what are we at, a Shania Twain concert? And she's like farting fireworks? Do you, are you invested in the fireworks company? Or how, how do you even have this much fucking fireworks? <laughs> the famous John C. Campbell Folk School has a tradition of shooting a pair of boxer shorts out of a cannon at midnight. I don't know why they do this, but it's kind of funny. I'm sure there's some story behind it. Somebody may have done it as a prank originally or something like that. Others participate in anvil jumping, which is using gunpowder to boost an anvil up, up, and away. Well, I would actually like to see that because that would take quite a bit of uh, gunpowder, even for a small anvil. They're very heavy and dense. Yeah, I wonder if they got it from the Ac- the Acme Anvil Company, and if like <laughs> the Roadrunner is there to watch. Well, I asked somebody at work the, uh, just a couple of days ago: Does Wally Coyote make safety choices for our me- you know for our immediate work area or what? Because that is some bullshit. They're not following OSHA protocol. They are, I know, and when I point out that you are actually violating OSHA protocol, then they don't like that, and then they try to fire me for months on end. Oh, then they like prey on you. Well, they try to, but you know what? <laughs> can't you can't hold me down? You little rabble rouser, you! I'm always going to be the squeaky wheel, and I will always fight for what's right. Well, I should also mention I didn't put this in my notes, but locally in Brasstown, North Carolina, they would have the annual like New Year's possum drop. Yeah, I know that's very local to this area, but I think it's one you have to mention because it's a pretty unique situation there. They would put a possum in like a little crate. Like a little basket crate. And, you know, and they would raise him and then they would slowly like lower him down. But then PETA started complaining that this was animal cruelty and they finally, I guess, stopped doing the possum drop. Yeah, but uh, I think the possum was into it. I don't think it was animal cruel. The possum was having a fucking good time. He was just chilling in a little box. Well, they were keeping him up for, you know, who knows how long. And possums are scavengers. And so he's been provided with all kinds of, like, fruit and shit like that. So he's totally well-fed and fat. And then they, you know, I mean, it's a fucking possum, guys. You know, I mean, it's like this rat. On steroids. They're so cute. They're cute when they're babies, but they're scary when they get big. No, I think they're really cute. I moved into a house one time that hadn't been um um hadn't been lived in for quite a while, some months, and uh there was a fucking possum in the cabinets. Did it jump out at you like No, it was totally like the like squirrel and fucking and Christmas vacation tree and the Christmas tree and vaca- uh, Christmas vacation. Yeah. Yeah, like you you hear something like, What is that? Like something mildly thumping, and you open it and it's like a full grown big 10, 12 pound possum. I don't even know if that's a big pot, but it was a big possum. And it's like, you know, when they're scared and they have that horrible rat face and that tail. They're so cute. When they're babies. No, they're cute grown. You don't think that. I do. I think they're adorable. I like a cute possum. Okay, so off subject, since we're on the subject of possums here, but it's off our mountain murder subject but i thought i'd share with you guys so my dad told me a story about when he was like in junior high school and my dad's an asshole but i guess he's always been an asshole like he and some of the other neighborhood kids there was a lady that lived in their neighborhood so do you think when your dad was a kid adults would be like that little kid's an asshole yeah i mean i'm pretty sure you I've really think he was like, just been an asshole all his life uh, yeah well i mean you know what I just appreciate the dedication, and that's just who he is. Yeah. So there was a lady that lived in the neighborhood, and I guess she didn't like 
you know, there was like, a, I guess, a big group of kids, probably mostly boys, and they would just, you know, do little boy shit, and Dumb terrorize, kid and, stuff. yeah, terrorize yeah. the neighborhood, dirt bikes and shit like that. And so she would just kind of like bitch at them, like, eh, get off my lawn. And so they didn't particularly like her. And they caught this possum and they put it in her mailbox. Well, that's pretty messed like, up. you know, middle of the night. And so the next morning when she opens the mailbox, like it's one of those hissing ah, possums. And it like, you know, leaps Jumps out, out of the mailbox. Her. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God, and screaming. And then they were like watching it and thought it was hilarious. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I could see some little country ass kids doing so. Some, something I guess like you that. can get yourself an attack possum if yeah. you've got a neighbor you don't like. Some people have pet possums. I want a pet possum. It's an opossum, by the way. We're from the mountains. It's a possum. Is, is the O silent? Or I think it actually is an opossum, right? It is an opossum, but we around here say possum. But you know, all the memes and stuff says possum with a P. They just leave the O out. Well, because it's a fucking possum, Dylan. Now, back to our story. Would you like to know who your soulmate is? I already know. Well, look into a well at midnight on New Year's Eve, right as the clock strikes 12, and you'll hear the love of your life's name echo from the bottom oh, of the well. That's just the Goonies down there, bro. They're trying to get you to help them out, and it's the wishing well, and then you like you want to help them, but then you find out that she's really into Josh Brolin. Look, I looked down at the wishing well, and all I heard was, Dylan, Dylan, that's what your soulmate, yeah. No, you're my soulmate. I already know this. So I don't need to look in a well. We should try it anyway. What, where the fuck's an open well? What if you find out that like... What are you, baby Jessica? Someone else is your soulmate. You know, baby Jessica found fell down like a 9-inch or 11-inch pop or some shit. It wasn't even like old Tommy Well. So I don't even know what she was doing out there fucking around those wells anyway. That was like the first big news story I remember from my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. It was like ter- I was terrified by the thought of just like randomly falling in a well. No, no, baby Jessica was a huge. It was one of the one of, in my mind the top five sensationalized nationwide stories that everybody was talking about. Yeah, and then I, I had this like really irrational fear of like falling in a well for like probably ten, fifteen years after that. <laughs> well, then like you 20. figure out that nowadays a well is a you know a pipe. That it's not like a. I don't know. And when I was a little kid, and I was hearing about this little girl, and I felt bad about it. Um, I was imagining the you know the picturesque stone well with the with the bucket and the rope and all that but that's not what she fell down okay it was just a pipe that's what you said well, i'm saying like eight times we well, get she, it she it, needs to we be, get it it was a pipe dylan it she, was it was a pipe where's your parents at simmer down she should be more nimble stop shaming her parents is she alive yes now can we get back to this sorry gosh another derailed <sighs> do you see what i put up with Another superstition in Appalachia is called the first footer. If the first person who steps across the threshold of your home after the new year arrives is a tall, dark-haired man, you're sure to have good luck in the coming year. So Jason Momoa, baby, honey, sweetie pie, if you're listening, swing on by. He was in Maggie Valley. You want Aquaman over me. I'm a tall, dark-haired man. I'm six foot even. And I have dark, long locks of hair now. Yeah, I would definitely trade you in for Jason Momoa. And I have a very significant shadow profile, thank you very much. I would trade you in for Jason Momoa. Stand by that. You know, he might be an asshole. He might have a tiny penis for all you know. I don't care. Look at him. Mm. Yeah, he's an attractive guy. What did that mouth do, though? Well, Others he say... might not do that. He he is... Is... Uh, just Would you just stop? He's perfect. Just be quiet. He is an attractive guy. So you would fuck him too. See? I'm not saying if I was gay, I would fuck him. It's okay to. Admit I don't know if he'd be my top though. Well, there's something wrong with you. Others say you just need a male to step into the house first, and this might likely be steeped in some other folklore that the first person to set foot in your house will determine the sex of the children born that year, and it also is associated with livestock. So your hogs, your puppies your kittens whatever would be more born male as well we don't want everybody to be male then you can't have other babies well i guess well you can probably only birth one child a year dylan well yeah that's true because you're pregnant for 10 months so you're thinking okay you know and i guess back in the day they wanted to birth to have boys because they're going to be able to help with the farm and shit 
It's true. It's the reason that China wants a, a, a male a son instead of a daughter because they, they only get to have so many kids and they need to err because they're still misogynistic. On New Year's Day, you're supposed to take all the quilts and blankets off the beds, hang them on the clothesline, and beat them with sticks. You've got to air them out to get rid of the sickness for the whole year, and this will also ensure that you have comfort throughout the year. Okay. I could get, uh, and I think that was just a daily chore too, but I mean, that's a cute story. You got to take the rugs and blankets and beat them out. You're supposed to lay out some cut-up onions to soak up bad energy so you don't take it with you into the new year. It's another tradition. You're supposed to take a string and measure your kids from their nose to their knee, then tie the string someplace where it won't be disturbed. And this is supposed to keep your kids healthy throughout the new year. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I've never heard that one. Placing a potato along with seven pennies in a tin... And you're supposed to hide it somewhere. And this will ensure you always have what you need. A potato with seven pennies. Yep. So get your little tin, put your tater and your seven pennies in it. Okay. Many Appalachian Americans recite Psalm 23 while they clean their floors. And if you're sweeping or mopping, it needs to always be from the rear of the house moving forward. And then you push the dirt outside. It's another New Year's Day tradition. Some people say to swat the corners of your property or your home with willow branches to keep away bad energies. Yeah, I think uh, willow branches are tied to, you know, um, more than one mountain tree. It's always had kind of a mystical property to it. Lighting three candles for those who passed away before the new year, but you're supposed to make sure that you don't set them in a line or use the same match when you light them. This will foretell that someone might get burned before March if you do this. Oh, my gosh. So make sure you don't do that. You don't want anybody to get burned. Stick a gold eye needle into the top of an egg and push it all the way through. Then you're supposed to bury the egg upright in your front yard for protection and blessings. Maybe we should try some of these. Immigrants from Wales believed in spreading ashes over the hearth on New Year's Day and that this could predict events for the new year. If footprints were left in the ashes, like headed towards the front door, that meant someone was going to die. If the footprints went to the bedroom, it meant a new family member would be added that year. And if the ashes formed the shape of a ring, it foretold marriage. Descendants from Wales? Yes. That's interesting. It is bad luck to hang up a new calendar before the first day of the new year. I've heard, actually heard people say that. I've, I've heard people tell me at work and stuff, what, what, don't don't put that calendar up. So hey, those old timers. are a few of the Appalachian New Year's traditions. Yeah, some of those are pretty interesting, don't you think? They are. Yeah, I think I'm going to try some of that. Okay, well, we will. I'm going to sweep the house from the front to back and see if I'm pushed the bad energy out. What if what if you're the bad energy and, and then you just have to go outside? Well, that's just when you're hitting me with a broom. You need to be hit with a broom sometimes. That's not true. Anyway, I would not hit you with my broom because I have to drive it places. <laughs> you don't want to scratch my new car. I don't I don't have collision insurance on my broom. Oh my gosh. All right, Dylan. Well, that has been our offbeat episode. We hope you guys have a safe and happy new year and we'll see you in twenty twenty one. Yes, and uh, I, I think we all hope it, maybe it'll be better uh, for everyone, and it'll just uh, we can put 2020 behind us and just kind of forget about all this mess. Happy New Year!